Hi, I'm Dave Chow with Kilo Paddles, and we're going to show you how to top a fixed length stand up paddle. Um, first thing you want to do is you want to get the measurement for the paddle. The paddle I'm building here is going to be a 78 inch total length paddle. I think this is the easiest way to find um, where you want to cut to get the correct length. So what I do is I take the total length of this paddle right now. This is an uncut paddle at this point, and I get 87 and a half inches. Um, I do, the, I do the math in my head. I've already done this previously, by the way. Minus 78 inches, and I know I need to cut nine and a half inches off the length of this shaft right here. I'm measuring with the T-top on, right? So you can see that that's, I have it marked off here. I have it wrapped with tape. This will help you um, keep, keeps the, minimizes the frame. Um, we're gonna cut on my chop saw. Normally I wear a mask and I wear hearing protection when I do this, it's pretty loud. Um, but just for sake of the video, we're just going to move along quickly. Um, the blade I have inside of my saw, uh, what we're using is a tile cutting blade. It actually doesn't have teeth. It won't cut wood. It's diamond impregnated. These blades cost like 50 bucks. I'm normally using a wet saw, but you can cut with them dry because this is a quick cut. It's not heating up the blade. Um, like I say, this is just a tile saw blade. You can put it in any chop saw. Um, I can't cut accurately with a hacksaw, so I don't try and use one. Um, I really recommend using something like this with a good fence set up. It's the, it's the best way to get a clean cut. So here we go, I'm gonna cut this off, I'm gonna cut this off now. I think it's a good idea to always check and see if you got the right length. This would be really embarrassing if I don't. 78 inches. When we send the top, it's going to be prepped already, so you don't need to do anything to the top. But because we've cut this off, um, we're going to have to sand inside of the shaft to get good adhesion. This is an important step because always you're gluing to a slippery surface. There's a, when we, these tubes are made, they're made with a metal mandrel. The metal mandrel is polished. And so the surface inside of there is really smooth. The glue doesn't, the, the adhesive will not stick to it. And it's, it'll stick, but it's not a good bond. So you're gonna have to do two things. You're gonna have to rough it up, and then I clean it out. So this is just like 80 grit sandpaper. I just kind of stick my finger in there and just sand. The other thing I do is, um, is I like to prep the end to make sure it's okay so that no one gets poked. And so what I'm doing, this is like 240 grit sandpaper on my block. And I just go around the edge. Doesn't take much. Now I'm going around the edge to kind of just make it sand a slight bevel on the tube. We use little scraps of uh, paper towel. It's just easier to use this than a big one because we're gonna throw these little, these little scraps away. I'm gonna clean the inside of the tube. If there's any mold release in here, um, I'm using acetone. Uh, and what I'm using here, this is a, a shotgun, um, I don't know, thing for cleaning the barrel of a shotgun. It seems to work really well. The acetone dries almost immediately. Um, so basically, we're ready to glue. Uh, one thing I want to point out is, inside of the T-top, there's a little air relief hole. You can see that we have something drilled here, and we have a little hole over here. And when you're pushing it together, the air that's compressed inside of this um, tube is going to be evacuated, so there won't be any back pressure. The other thing I want to point out to you is that my table has been leveled. This block right here, is set up for a 78 inch paddle. I have, I've leveled it with my digital um, level and it's set to be level with this. And so I'm not gonna have to do any eyeballing. 
Um, this is a really quick way to, to do things. Um, the thing is, if you set these things up, you, you're really accurate, and then you don't make mistakes, and then you don't have the customer coming back. I think it's worthwhile to do these kinds of things, like a chop saw or have some kind of setup for figuring out how to get the top on. Um, I'm gonna mix some glue now. And we use epoxy pumps. Um, this is a much better way to go about it than trying to um, mix those little container things because especially when you're measuring it out. Um, I know that all I'm doing is one thing, so one pump is just gonna go right through. Oh, I need a stir stick. You gotta mix the epoxy really well. I know some people use Gorilla Glue, they use hot glues. Um, you know, I haven't tried those other things. I mean, um, I'm trying to make a permanent bond and really the best thing for bonding an epoxy product because th that's what that paddle's made out of is epoxy. Is epoxy. Um, so that's kind of, I just, I want them to stay on. If I didn't want them to stay on, I guess I would use hot glue or something like that. It's kind of boring, but you gotta mix. Kind of screwed up. I forgot my brush. We use acid brushes. And so what you want to do is you want to put a small amount of glue on the inside of the tube. Not a lot, just a small amount is good. Basically what you gotta do is you gotta coat both surfaces. That gives you the best chance for a watertight seal. So I'm going all the way around this thing. Generally speaking, when we're gluing things, we throw away more glue that gets squeezed out than actually stays in the joint, and that's just kind of the way it is. Um, that's the only way to really ensure that you got a, a good seal on this thing. We go around the bottom a little bit because we're going to turn this thing upside down. Now what we do is we just insert it. I'm working over a garbage can. And the reason I do this is because all the excess glue just drops into the garbage can. And then we're going to clean it off. This takes a little bit of doing. Um, but So I know that I turned the paddle over, the, basically the label, the front paddle is now down. And I do that because um, the T-top is flat on the bottom. This is just electrical tape, and I'm going to use this to bond this in place. I know if I press it down on top of the shaft, it's going to make this thing stay level. Once you got the first few wraps, you're okay to pick it up. I went around four times. I generally don't count, but uh, that'll probably work. And this is how I check to make sure it's straight. What I do is I hold the paddle blade level, and my hands usually to tell me where where level is. You just kind of you just naturally know it. And then what I do is I stare off and look at the t top. And what I'm looking at is the flat part of this t top, and I'm looking for it to be level into my eye and that's how you double check it and this one is this one is level that's generally from any kind of bumping or moving or when you're taping you did something wrong or something um, but I know my blocks were level um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry this and the way we dry this thing is we put the t-top on the ground and 
The reason we dry it this way is because what we want, the, the glue is to go down to the bottom and to create a seal down there. The reason I don't, I don't put huge amounts of glue up inside of there is it just ends up bleeding back in the T-top. It's just excessive glue that's been pushed up into the tube. Um, that's it. Um, that's how you put on a T-top.